What is up guys? Welcome back for our week two match for the PCL, the Pokemon Champions League. This week we are taking on the Orlando City Cobalions, coached by Nick or Mighty Mamoswine, the commissioner of the league. And uh, let's go over Nick's team really quickly. He has a Jirachi Mega Venusaur Togekiss, the ultimate core, uh, Z Garchomp, Sneasel, Hitmontop, Suicune, Frogadier, Arcanine, and Raichu. So uh, this is probably one of my most difficult matchups in the uh in the entire league solely based on mega venusaur um mega venusaur plus jirachi is very difficult for my team to deal with because mega alakazam while it can destroy mega venusaur um it it's posed a threat by bulky steel psychics like jirachi even though it gets access to, to shadow ball jirachi can eat those up pretty easily so uh this is going to be a very hard match uh, we're going to go over the team builder. If you guys want to skip the team builder, then definitely hit the timestamp in the description. Go straight to the battle. But if you want to understand my sets and uh, what I thought to bring to this match, then uh, stick with me for now. The first mon we'll go over is Infernape or Chimpact. Uh, Phytinium Z with uh, Iron Fist. I'm running Close Combat, Mock Punch, Fire Punch, and Swords Dance. I opted for Fire Punch over Flare Blitz because I knew that I wouldn't want to be taking the recoil from Flare Blitz as I'm going to be wearing myself down with my own hail. Uh, and hitting Garchomp with um, with contact moves uh, such as close combat. So I really wanted to avoid as much as possible taking any kind of recoil. So I paired up Fire Punch with Iron Fist. Swords Dance is there to boost my attack. This is my endgame sweeper, guys. You look at his team. Jirachi has to come defensive for my Mega Alakazam or it won't be able to switch in twice. Uh, Mega Venusaur can only hit me for so much damage, especially behind an Aurora Veil. You're going to see we're running that. Uh, his Garchomp is slower than me because of my speed, 208. Uh, with a Jolly Nature, puts me right above Garchomp. Um, Togekiss can't take multiple uh, plus two fire punches. Sneasel doesn't want to take a Mach Punch. Um, even though Sneasel can hit me with things like Aerial Ace, I have priority for it. Uh, Hitmontop can come in and intimidate me. But again, behind an Aurora Veil, it's not going to be doing too much damage even with close combat. Uh, Suicune is the one thing that I have to eliminate during the game to make sure that my Infernape can win. Uh, it's going to be able to eat up a plus two um, all-out pummeling pretty easily and fire back a Scald. So that's something that I do want to avoid. Uh, Frogadier dies to uh, plus two Mach Punch uh, after Rocks. Um, so there's that. And uh, Raichu takes a ton of damage. And Arcanine can only do so much once again unless it wants to run something like Bulldoze. Uh, so that's the uh, Infernape that can run through his team at the end of the game. Moving on to MV, the Mega Alakazam. First time that we're bringing it this season. Uh, I am Magikarp, of course, before Mega Evolution. I also have Trace, post-Mega Evolution. Uh, could be useful for something like uh, Special Defense Drops uh, because of Jirachi's Serene Grace. Togekisses as well. We have... Uh, uh, Psyshock on there is for, of course, Mega Venusaur, able to hit the Suicune quite hard, uh, as well as the uh, Garchomp and the Hitmontop specifically. Dazzling Gleam is there for the uh, Garchomp. I can also hit the Sneasel for super effective damage should he try to Pursuit Trap me. I am faster than Sneasel at this speed tier. We're running Modest because I need the little bit of extra damage. And I'm deciding to run Substitute because um, it was something that I did against Togue in our match. Uh, for March Madness was that I ran substitute because I force out his mega with Alakazam and I'm able to get up a sub if his Jirachi comes in and reveals to be scarfed Then I still get off damage before he U-turns out or goes, goes for Ironhead. Ironhead I have an easy switch into my Zapdos for uh, for that and uh, If he's not scarfed then he's gonna take two shadow balls and if I get the special defense drop on him He's essentially dead to, to two unless he runs a very specific set which you guys might actually see, see during the match. So this is uh, pretty much my wall breaker uh, for this game. This huge 493 special attack uh, really does well. Psyshock, I decided to go Psyshock over Psychic, uh, just because his Mega Venusaur is more than likely to run specially defensive uh, for my Zapdos, my Ninetales, things like that. So uh, I decided to go with that. And uh, also, I call mine Suicune if it's low enough. If it's boosted all the way, I can still kill it with Psyshock. So that's why I went with that option. Next up, we have Cooper Kashiro, the Zapdos. This should actually be together, uh, now that I'm looking at it. Uh, and I am running Thunderbolt, U-Turn, Air Cutter, and Roost with a max specially defensive set. 
this is able to check his Venusaur pretty well. Uh, he would constantly have to synthesis up on my air cutters. And if I have hail up, he's only getting back 25% from synthesis. So my air cutters are doing more than he's healing, uh, which is really nice. Sludge Bomb still does quite a bit to me, uh, but not enough to 2 a KO, nowhere near enough to 2 a KO. This is also my check to his Togekiss, should it get up a nasty plot. I'm still able to take that thing on. Uh, I'm not faster than a max speed Togekiss, of course, but I don't want to invest that much speed into my Zapdos. I still want it to be able to check the Mega Venusaur. This is also a great switch into his Suicune, even if he has uh, Ice Beam. I can take that quite easily. Sneasel does revenge me, and Garchomp to some extent if it does have Stone Edge. But other than that, this can deal with his team relatively well. It even deals with an Icy Wind Jirachi because I'm max specially defensive. So, uh, unless he's running Ice Punch, which I can't really see because my uh, Crocodile, which is one of my main switch-ins to his Jirachi, is uh, going to be... Um, is going to have Intimidate, so it's going to lower his attack. I don't think he's going to want to go physical this game. Uh, so Zapdos deals with the majority of his team very well. Even deals with uh, Protean Frogadier uh, with Ice Beam. Like, it can take it quite well. So uh, that's the idea of the Zapdos set. Also, to be able to U-turn out on the Mega Venusaur on the turns that I know that it's forced to synthesis. Uh, and U-turn is just great for momentum. It means that I don't run into his Garchomp and get stopped. Uh, and Garchomp is difficult for me to switch into. So there's that. Next up, we have Gym Leader Geo. The Alolan Ninetales coming for the second week in a row. This time, I am bringing Light Clay over Choice Scarf. Light Clay with the Aurora Veil is amazing against his team. Uh, already, his team fails to two hit KO a lot of my members um, with some of their coverage. So, uh, with an Aurora Veil up, that becomes a four hit KO essentially. And a lot of my team has a natural, a reliable recovery uh, with Zapdos and uh, and Milotic being my main defensive core this game. I am running Nasty Plot just because if I do get rid of his Jirachi in the late game. This can also sweep with Blizzard and Moonblast combined. Blizzard able to hit his uh, Togekiss, um, his, well mainly his Togekiss and his Mega Venusaur uh, for some super effective damage. Of course Mega Venusaur has the Thick Fat, that's why I need the Nasty Plot uh, to get up a few of those. Behind an Aurora Veil I do not die to a Sludge Bomb unless he's fully offensive uh, and I've taken Rocks damage, so that's fine. Uh, Moonblast is there to hit the rest of the team essentially, everything but Jirachi. It hits, uh, Garchomp for super effective damage as well. Uh, it hits Sneasel, Hitmontop, uh, Suicune if it doesn't have any Calm Lines up, but then again I have Nasty Plot so I can beat him there. Uh, it also hits his Frogadier really hard, his Raichu. Uh, Arcanine is one of the other things that I can't really hit with this, but Ninetales is mainly here for the Aurora Veil support. Gym Leader Geo coming for uh, the long game uh, as Geo does in the GBA. And uh, moving on, we have uh, our Jirachi check right here. I'm running a Crocodile, 88 speed. Why are all my EVs gone? Hold up. <laughs> this is supposed to be that. And I think this was as much HP as possible. I could be wrong. But anyway, for some reason, my EVs aren't there. Um, I know they were there during the game I checked. But uh, we have Knock Off, Earthquake, Pursuit, and Stealth Rocks. Obviously, this is my Rock Setter. Uh, rocks do a lot of damage to his team between wearing down Mega Venusaur, uh, Togekiss taking super effective damage from the Rocks. Uh, so 25% Sneasel as well, as well as Arcanine. Rocks are just amazing this game, so I'd like to get them up as early as possible. Uh, I want to wait for an opportunity to get this in on Jirachi once I scout its set. Uh, and I am faster than any def defensive variant of Jirachi. Again, I am convinced that he will bring a defensive Jirachi set uh, just because of my Alakazam. So uh, if it doesn't come max HP, max speed F, I'll be surprised. If he runs a little bit of speed, I'm still speed creeping that. Uh, if he runs 20 EVs, I'm faster. So that's why I decided to go with the 88 speed. I'm also faster than a slightly speed invested um, Suicune as well as a Mega Venusaur. So I'm able to hit those with either Knockoff or Earthquake respectively. Pursuit is is if he just so happens to be faster than me because he will more than likely run U-turn. So I do want to get off the slower pursuit uh, on him and knock out his Jirachi if possible because once his Jirachi is gone, that opens the door to pretty much everything except for Infernape. Infernape relies on everything else, um, on other things being gone and not Jirachi. So pretty much I have the team covered in that way. Uh, and finally we have Pokemon. Uh, sorry, that was Crimson Seabad, the Crocodile. And finally, we have Pokemon, the uh, Milotic, with Recover, Ice Beam, Miracode, and Toxic. No Stab, Milotic is best Milotic. Um, I'm running 52 Speed EVs to be able to Speed Creep a slightly Speed Invested Suicune, uh, so that I can Toxic it before it can get up a sub on me. Uh, I can also <coughs> Recover up uh, in front of it. 
uh, do whatever, pretty much. Uh, Ice Beam over Scald is because I want to be able to catch his Mega Venusaur on the switch in. Uh, it also hits his Garchomp harder. The reason I have 28 special attack EVs is because I don't want his Garchomp being Swords Dance uh, with Sal Salic Berry and uh, living whatever attack I go for. If I don't burn Scald, then I'm done. Like, I lose to that Garchomp. And if I don't kill with Ice Beam, then I also lose to that Garchomp, so I need to make sure that I'm doing enough uh, damage to his Garchomp, that's why I invested a little bit more in Special Attack. If he's a little bit bulkier, then I have other Mons that can deal with him, so it's not a big deal. Uh, and finally, Mirror Coat is to be able to uh, destroy the Mega Venusaur, should he be uh, G Giga Drain, of course. It also uh, deals somewhat with the Togekiss, as long as he doesn't uh, flinch me down. And uh, big thing is the Suicune, uh, the Raichu, and the Frogadier. Uh, Suicune being, being the biggest one, uh, I can just sit there and mirror coat in front of it, it's not a big deal. This move has a lot of PP, as you can see, 32, so we'll be able to take that on. So that's pretty much the team. Uh, let's go into the battle and see how it went down. Alright guys, so we are here, and as you can see, Nick brought the Arcanine, Suicune, Mega Venusaur, Togekiss, uh, Garchomp, and Jirachi. So, uh, pretty much most of what I expected. I was kind of surprised not to see the Sneasel, uh, especially something like a Scarf Sneasel to trap my Alakazam and get rid of it, because that could be a huge threat to his team, especially looking at it. Uh, Jirachi, I guess, in his head was enough to deal with it, uh, but I have things for Jirachi, so... Uh, let's uh, put this on normal and see how this game went down. So I'm gonna lead off with my Crocodile, like I said in the team builder. I want to get up my rocks as soon as possible. He's gonna lead with his Venusaur, unfortunately, so I am gonna be forced to switch out right here into my specialty defensive Zapdos, as he is going to uh, whip out the Leech Seed, I believe. No, the Giga Drain, as I am able to take that very easily. I'm, I'm uh, back up to 96%. And then I'm gonna go for the Air Cutter, deal some damage to this thing. And uh, he's gonna go for the Toxic, so he packed the Toxic over the Sludge Bomb, which is fair. Uh, and that's gonna really wear down my Zapdos, gonna make it harder for me to stay in against this, uh, this Venusaur. Uh, I planned, basically, to, uh, dodge a couple of Sludge Bomb poisons and just be able to air cutter him down, waste all his synthesis. Uh, that was the idea behind the Zapdos, but he did bring Toxic, so that's gonna make it a little bit more difficult. Luckily, though, I do have the U-turn, and I know he's gonna go for synthesis on this turn, so I'm gonna U-turn out. And I'm gonna go straight into my Mega Alakazam, uh, as he is going to synthesis up. And uh, now I'm going to set up a sub in front of this Venusaur, and he's going to actually go into Jirachi, uh, Kaka, the, the, uh, the Jirachi, and I'm going to get up a sub, meaning that I'm going to get to find out what this Jirachi is. And uh, I go for a Shadow Ball here. Uh, I get the uh, special defense drop because he gave me Serene Grace, so it's 40%. Um, but I should have noticed by this damage, my Calyx actually said that this would do a little bit more, uh, somewhere around like 40 to 45%. So, uh, I'm, I was a little bit surprised by this damage, but also I didn't really take it into account and I didn't run any calcs, which I probably should have at this point, as uh, he's just going to U-turn out. Very simple for him right here. And uh, he's going to go out into his Garchomp. And now I'm not behind a sub, and this is actually a very pivotal turn of the game right here, guys, because nothing actually happens on this turn, but the fact that he brings in Garchomp against me tells me one of two things. Either he is just threatening me out with a physical move and knows that I can't knock him out with anything, or he's scarfed. One of the two. And at this very moment, I'm under the impression, okay, this Garchomp is choice scarfed. If Nick didn't bring a choice scarfer against me, it doesn't make much sense. It's either going to be this, or it's going to be his Togekiss. We've already seen Jirachi not to be choice scarfed. It's, it's got to be this Garchomp, right? So I'm going to switch out, and I'm going to go out into my Milotic as I, he actually pulls a double and goes into Venusaur, and that's what I mean by nothing happened that turn, except that I'm in a, least, in a less favorable matchup right now. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go back into my Zapdos, rinse and repeat the same process as before. He's going to go for a Toxic. It's not going to work. And uh, I'm going to... And it's a good thing that I switched out my Milotic there. Uh, and I'm going to go for the uh, Air Cutter right here on this turn. He brings in his Togekiss. Uh, and I'm gonna get off a little bit of damage. I do see that this Togekiss is uh, very defensive. It's got uh, leftovers as well. And I am going to get out of here with a U-turn. I also see that I'm faster than his Togekiss, which is good information. It means he's fully defensive. Gonna bring in my Ninetales, threaten out this Togekiss immediately. He's gonna go for a Wish. And I'm just gonna get up my Veil. I don't care what he wishes up. It's probably gonna be his Jirachi, but I can't touch it anyway. So there's no point in me trying to. I'm just gonna get up the Veil. And now I'm sitting pretty. Now he's going to uh, bust out... The flash cannon right here and reveals that he's special against my uh, crocodile. Luckily, I'm behind the Aurora Veil. If 
Flash Cannon doesn't do too much. He does get the Sped F drop, but it's not a big deal. I am threatening this Jirachi, and uh, Nick actually stays in here to go for the U-turn as I go for Pursuit, thinking that he would switch out, uh, knowing that I know that he's not Scarfed and that I could easily speed creep uh, defensive Jirachi, but he decides to just go for the U-turn, so good on him, I guess. I was behind the Aurora Veil, uh, and he was intimidated, so that U-turn did 10%. <laughs> Super effective. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to get my rocks here against the Suicune. And uh, I'm going to take a lot of damage on my Crocodile, but I knew I could live even with the Sped F drop thanks to the Aurora Veil. And uh, now I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to go into my Lotic as he decides to just throw out another Scald. If he gets the burn, awesome. That means I'm in Marvel scale. I can take on the Garchomp a little bit better. Uh, and I can switch into any move against the Arcanine, even a Wild Charge. So that's very nice. He's actually going to pull a switch out into his Togekiss, and I'm going to get a Toxic off on this thing. And on the following turn, you guys are going to see right here, I'm actually going to end up critting this Ice Beam. Uh, against this Togekiss, and uh, that means that it's going to go down, uh, essentially, on the following turn. It's not going to go straight down thanks to the leftovers, but it's going to be at uh, 5%, so there's no point in him keeping this, but he does, and he switches out to his Mega Venusaur uh, on my recover, because I thought he might want to try uh, to attack me, uh, forgetting that I was actually faster than the, uh, than the Togekiss right there. Now I'm just going to switch back out into my Zapdos, and he actually reveals that he does have Sludge Bomb. This kind of surprised me, because I have Nihilego on my team, and uh, this, my Nihilego would have essentially walled this, um, because even Giga Drain doesn't do that much to Nihilego, it's very specially defensive. I expected him to run Earthquake, uh, because it does hit my Nihilego pretty hard, it also hits my Infernape for super effective damage, and it hits my Zapdos should I try to Roost if he wanted to speed creep me. So, uh, I don't agree with not bringing Earthquake, but he did bring a Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, uh, toxic and synthesis as we've seen his four moves by now. So now he's just gonna go for another sludge bomb That's fine. I'm going to uh, essentially repeat the same process as before wear this thing down You turn out on it on a force synthesis and bring back in my mega alakazam Now I'm threatening this thing and now I'm pretty convinced that he's not gonna go straight into his Jirachi to take a shadow ball uh, Because he saw how much it did before and if I get off a couple of those It's really bad for him. So I'm actually gonna stay in in Psy Shock and he stays in with his Venusaur Which is pretty clutch. He's gonna go for a sludge bomb and unfortunately he does get the poison right here Which is gonna put our Mega Alakazam on the timer I would have gone for shadow ball on the following turn But he is gonna switch out here and go straight into his Togekiss as a sack This is where it goes down and now my Alakazam is sitting unfortunately at 11% or 10% and uh, It's not gonna be doing much the rest of the game. He brings in his Arcanine. I read the E-Speed quite easily, and I'm going to bring in my Milotic, as he is going to go for the Extreme Speed. I take that like nothing, and uh, I'm just going to fire off a Toxic right here on this turn, I believe, as he's going to bring in his Suicune. I actually go for the Ice Beam to cover the uh, Mega Venusaur, because I couldn't allow that thing to come in, and I was faster than it, so I could two-hit KO with Ice Beam. Uh, now I'm going to switch out into uh, my Alolan Ninetales, because I know that this thing can't do too much damage to me. He's going to go for a Scald. That is fine with me. I take a little bit of damage, but I'm okay. Uh, and now I'm going to go for an Aurora Veil, as he starts setting up Calm Mines. And this is not great, uh, but I do have Toxic on my Lotic, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm pretty sure his only attacking move is Scald at this point, so I am going to go out into my Lotic. I can take them like nothing. He's going to go for another Calm Mine, and I'm just going to go for a Toxic on this following turn. As uh, you guys are going to see, uh, this week can get toxic. This uh, with the hail uh, throws off my commentary a little bit. But he is going to go for the scald. He's not going to get the burn. And uh, he's going to get worn down by toxic. And uh, right here on this following turn, I believe um, he goes for, or I switch out into my Zapdos to try to wear this thing down a little bit further. Uh, as he goes for another calm mine. And right here, I'm like, oh no. Okay, I, I got it. I understood immediately when he went for another Calm Mind that this thing was rest. And uh, that I was going ha to have a very hard time breaking this thing down. And now it's got three Calm Minds up, so this is going to be tough. Uh, I'm just going to throw out a couple of... Uh, I'm going to go for Roost first, because I'm still behind the Veil. As he goes for, for for the rest. And I've only taken, what, taken one turn of uh, Toxic up until now. So I'm taking uh, gradual... Uh, damage as we go. We're gonna start firing off some teeth bolts fishing for a crit I could knock this Suicune out with a crit very easily as you guys can see from the damage He's gonna sleep talk another calm mind. This is a very scary set uh, And I am just going to keep throwing out Thunderbolts praying for a crit uh, That I am not getting and I think at this point in Nick's mind he had won the game He was up to uh, plus five plus five with his Suicune uh, and there was nothing I could do about it so I'm going to uh, keep Thunderbolting, and he's going to uh, wake up and Scald me, and down goes Zapdos to the combination of Scald plus Toxic 
funny, behind the Aurora Veil, I still only took 32% from that Scald, <laughs> and he's at plus 5. Now I'm going to bring back in my Milotic, and I should have never switched this out to begin with. Uh, but there wasn't much I could do, and I didn't want to reveal Mirror Coat too early. So now I'm going to go for a Toxic, uh, again, as he goes for a Scald. And uh, I'm going to take 30%, which is quite a bit. Once again, he's not going to burn me, so it's not too bad. And uh, I expect him to rest on this turn, so I think I'm actually going to recover on this turn. And uh, he's going to get rid of the Toxic immediately, which is a good play on his part. Uh, and now that he's in Sleep Talk, and he has a chance of getting Scald out of his control... Here is where I'm going to reveal the Mirror Coat, and this Scald is doing enough to me for me to two-hit KO the Suicune with a Mirror Coat. Nick's play here should have been to not click uh, Sleep Talk, and rather to, um, to just click any other move but Sleep Talk, so that he couldn't have a chance of, uh, of hitting Scald. But he actually does click Sleep Talk again. Uh, fortunately for me, though, he gets Calm Mind, so now I'm thinking, okay, he's going to attack me on the following turn. Uh, he's just going to want to get off damage, he's not going to let me recover for free, and uh, he's going to go for the Scald, and once again, I go for Mirror Coat, and I am able to knock out this Suicune, thankfully, get rid of it, that thing was a huge threat, Milotic coming through already, getting uh, two kills right there, so, uh, one kill, excuse me, Alakazam got the other kill on Togekiss, so, now I'm going to bring back in my Ninetales on his uh, Venusaur, because I'm pretty convinced he's going to go for a uh, Giga Drain, and uh, I'm going to get up a, a last ditch Aurora Veil right here. Before I go down to the Sludge Bomb, now, the reason I did this was, one, his Synthesis uh, is recovering less than my Blizzard is doing. So, even if he Synths on the following turn, uh, or on this turn that I go for Aurora Veil, it's fine, I can just Blizzard him down on the following turns. My Aurora Veil is up for eight turns, I can keep doing this, and his Synthesis uh, is slowly wearing down, uh, and he's already wasted two, so he's only got six. The other reason is, if Ninetales went down, I looked at his team, and I was like, okay, well now this can put in work. My uh, my Infernape is in, and his Togekiss, which could have been Scarfed, as well as his Suicune are both gone. And uh, I'm free to set up a Swords Dance and go ham on his team, and he's going to go for a Sludge Bomb, and he's not going to get the poison on this turn. So I'm sitting at 66% with a plus 2 Infernape, and uh, he brings in his Arcanine as I go for a Fire Punch. I'm just trying to knock out the Venusaur. And now I'm thinking, okay, this Arcanine is pretty defensive from the Fire Punch damage. The worst it can do to me is Bulldoze. And he's likely to switch here again. So I'm going to go for another Swords Dance. As he tries to sack off his Venusaur on this turn, and I get up another SD. And this is awesome because now I knock out the uh, Venusaur guaranteed. And uh, the rest of his team is uh, pretty much dead to this Infernape. So I'm going to go for a Fire Punch. And right here, guys, he brings in his Arcanine. Instead of his Garchomp. And I'm thinking, alright, well, I'm behind an Aurora Veil. If he thinks that I'm bulky, he's not going to want to go into his Scarf Garchomp because he might not knock me out with an Earthquake. But I'm a Sword Stance Infernape. Why would I be that bulky? I, I need the speed for his team, and I need the attack so that Sword Stance is actually doing something. Right here, I should have realized uh, that I could sweep his team. So I'm going to go for a close combat on this turn, and he's going to bring in his Garchomp, but I'm still remembering that turn from earlier when he brought it in on my Mega Alakazam. And I'm thinking, if this thing is Scarfed, I am going to get blown back uh, by a Scarfed Garchomp in the late game. I need damage off on this thing. I'm convinced it's Scarfed. So instead of going for the all-out pummeling and knocking this thing out and winning the game with Infernape, with Fire Punch on his Jirachi, I'm going to click Mach Punch just to get some damage off. And he's going to go for an Earthquake, and he's going to knock me out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my Milotic, and I'm going to just click Ice Beam, uh, because if he is Scarfed, I will knock him out on the following turn, and then Crook can knock out this uh, Jirachi with Earthquake. I'm actually going to go for Recover, sorry, uh, because I am still behind the Veil. I want to take advantage of it. If he is locked into uh, Earthquake, I'm good. His Jirachi comes in and reveals to be Charge Beam. <laughs> charge Beam, guys. It's Flash Cannon, Charge Beam, U-Turn, and uh, Blank Move, which I think Nick told me, but I can't remember at this point. He goes for Charge Beam, and I'm like, oh, crap. Uh, this Jirachi is, um, is a threat. It's a big threat. <clears throat> However, I know that my Crocodile outspeeds it. We saw that earlier in the game. And, uh, now that I know that he's special, I can actually throw out some Mirror Coats. I didn't want his Garchomp coming in there for free, so I went for Ice Beam. But I know he's special. So I'm actually gonna switch out here, and I'm gonna go into Mega Alakazam to, to sack it off, because I don't want him to do a lot of damage to me with whatever move he has. 
if he's charge beam thunderbolt for some reason he can do a lot to me and he can even crit me which would put me in garchomp range and i can't have that so i'm gonna go into crook and uh i'm gonna click earthquake right here and i'm gonna see that he's salic berry so you guys know how the pcl works uh if you get a 2-0 win or less you only get two points and your opponent gets one i could have swept with infernape and gotten the 3-0 or the 4-0 win but instead because of my fear of scarf garchomp I, I was telling myself the entire time it's not scarf garchomp instead it's salic berry and now i'm in trouble so i'm gonna stay in with crook here as uh nick actually decides to earthquake uh he doesn't get up the sword dance which is fine with me now i'm gonna go into my lotic and i know that this garchomp can't do that can't do that much to me because he needs enough speed to where salic berry uh puts him above say uh in uh, a an adamant scarf nape so he needs to be uh at least i think jolly he needs to be jolly he can't be adamant so he can't do that much to me even with an outrage and i'm just gonna go for an ice beam here he goes for a sword stance and i catch him with the ice beam and i knock out his garchomp um but at this point i was like wait a minute his his drachi special i can just mirror coat that thing down and i haven't seen leftovers either so i know that he's not recovering anything he's gonna go for a charge beam i'm gonna go for a um mirror coat right here and he's gonna get knocked down to 26 percent now what i thought that nick would do because he was um he's not gaining any leftovers recovery i thought one of two things he can wish or he can try to beat me down with u-turn because i can't do that much to him with ice beam uh i can try to freeze him which is what i'm gonna try to do uh but i know that he can try to wear me down with a u-turn and that's not affected by mirror coat so uh, or rather, Mirror Coat doesn't get uh, get to go off because of U-Turn, because it's a physical move, of course. So I'm going to go th throw out a, uh, an Ice Beam on this turn as he goes for a U-Turn, which is exactly what I expected. And I'm not going to get the Freeze. And now I think I'm going to go for a Recover, if I'm not mistaken, as he goes for a Flash Cannon. And he gets a Spideff Drop, and I was like, uh-oh, uh, this isn't good. If he if he crits me, I actually uh, get a crit on the Ice Beam. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm like, if he crits, like, a T-Bolt, or even that Flash can uh, even that... Um, that charge beam i could be in trouble right here so i'm actually just going to throw out a mirror coat to cover that option and if he attacks me with the u-turn i'm gaining back recovery and uh i get off the mirror coat on the correct turn that he is going to go for charge beam so that is going to be a 1-0 win my Lodic actually picking up three kills uh on the uh on the suicune the guard chomp and the uh the jirachi so now suicune's uh not suicune sorry my, my Lodic's actually up to five kills uh it's the league's kill leader at the moment so uh good job pokemon and, uh, however, I'm kicking myself after the game for not clicking all-out pummeling against the Garchomp because if the Garchomp scarfed, then my Suicune comes in and threatens it. And I hadn't realized at this point that his Jirachi was not only special, but it was also a Salt Vest. And that's why it took my, uh, my Omega Alakazam's hits, uh, the Shadow Ball specifically, so well. Um, had I realized this, uh, earlier, then I would have just sacked my infernape anyway to his um to his garchomp even if it was scarfed i would have found out that it was scarfed and i would have gone into my mylotic clicked ice beam on his drachi just clicked mirror coat he had no way of recovering up he had no leftovers he was a salt vest he was only attacking moves i could just wear down his drachi with mirror coat uh and that would be that and even if he got some sped f drops and crits my mylotic would need to be under like 45 percent for his garchomp to come in and kill uh, with an outrage potentially so and at that point I could sack my crook even if it came down to a 2-0 I could get off the intimidate but my mega alex Zen would still be live so if my Lodic was able to take down the rest of the team even if his garchomp was scarfed then uh, I would have had a 3-0 win and I would have gotten three points and Nick would have gotten zero so I'm kind of kicking myself for that uh, there are only two teams at the moment uh, that are six points uh, I'm five points and I think I'm tied with like three other teams being Merc and one other person uh, or two other people and uh yeah so i could have had six points a little unfortunate uh speaking of jar we actually face jar next week and uh that's going to be a very interesting matchup because uh, jar's been talking about his uh, amazing rain team since he drafted it uh and i kind of want to take it down so let's see if we can beat uh the per I my voice cracked there let's see if we can beat the person uh our kryptonite essentially in league format that uh we are just not able to beat ever 
Uh, if we can do it in the PCL, that would be amazing. We would go up to either seven or eight points, and we would be in a fantastic position uh, moving into the midseason. So great start so far. Uh, shout outs to Nick, guys. If you guys want to go check out his channel, his side of the battle, it will be in the description down below. And uh, he is the league's commissioner, so huge thank you to him as well for starting this league. Uh, great game. He brought me down to a 1-0 uh, when it should have been a little bit better than that. I think I brought the right team against him, thankfully. Uh, he admitted that Alolan Ninetales was actually an amazing bring and that he had nothing for it. Uh, I mean, he had Jirachi, but it, once the Aurora Veil was up, everything on my team could switch into Jirachi quite easily. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I'm pretty uh, convinced now that I'm thinking about it that his Jirachi's last move was probably Psychic. Otherwise, he had no way to hit my, uh, my Infernape. Uh, so that made the most sense. And yeah, um, guys, if you're still cheering on your Montreal Habsols after week two, uh, then thank you. Uh, leave a like for me down below. I know my commentary wasn't as amazing today. Uh, I'm kind of still a little bit tired. Uh, I didn't get, oh, well, I got a lot of sleep, but the night before I didn't, so I'm still a little wacky right now. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff with the GOT and everything. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been hard. I haven't been able to upload to my own channel as frequently as I would like. I haven't even been, been able to prep for uh, matches uh, as consistently as I would like to either, so uh, just a little rant there about what's going on. Uh, the GOT is taking up a lot of my time, so just bear with me, guys. There will be uh, a regular upload schedule back on the channel very, very soon. I want to make it a goal to uh, get back to a schedule that I used to have uh, over the course of last year before the GOT ever started. I was on an amazing recording schedule. I was uploading like 10 videos a day, uh, not not a day, a week, uh, from like between 7 to 10 videos a week, and I want to get back to that. So uh, be, please be patient. Uh, it is coming. I just need to uh, get the GOT sorted out, everything uh, with the videos that we want to make for that channel. By the way, if you haven't followed that channel yet, just look up uh, Global Overseas Tournament. Uh, Grand Overseas Tournament, excuse me. Uh, and, um, and subscribe to that channel. Uh, we have all our Power Rankings videos uh, going up right now. Uh, two are already up. There are two more to go up. And uh, we also have uh, live matches coming. Uh, as well as uh, other stuff for the channel, so that should be fun. But yeah, guys, uh, thank you for uh, continuing your support on this channel, for supporting the Montreal Habsols. Uh, again, leave a like if you did enjoy this battle. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.